environmental, social, and governance priorities gain traction, Filipino small and medium enterprises are increasingly seeking ways to incorporate sustainability into their operations as well as access green financing and foster sustainable growth. This comes at a time when some other companies are winding down their ESG reporting on worries that disclosures could give environmental or LGBT plus activists leverage to force companies to make unnecessary changes. Joining us today is ESGpedia Managing Director Benjamin So to discuss how ESG efforts might be made easier for SMEs. Ben, grateful you could join us and welcome to Follow the Money. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Now, Ben, could you start us off by explaining what ESG does, particularly in helping Filipino SMEs and how your program allows for access to sustainable financing through the SPARK program? Yes, so our platform ESGpedia, it is a digital solution. So there are many components to it, which includes integrating with the DTI, Department of Trade and Industries SPARK template. So through our collaboration with GRI ASEAN and the Philippines DTI, we integrated this SPARK template embedded with carbon calculator and digitalized solutions to allow Filipino SMEs to use the platform easily and be able to achieve their ESG report. So that means that they are also now able to receive sustainable financing easily, you know, as they are able to publish uh, credible ESG reports. Mm -hmm. We'll pick up on the carbon calculator in a moment, but first, um, what are the most immediate and then lasting financial impact you believe ESG adoption could have on the resilience and long-term profitability of Filipino businesses? Absolutely. Immediately in the short run, this ESG adoption could allow companies to be able to get access to sustainable finance and, of course, achieve regulatory readiness. After all, you know, a lot of companies now demand uh, suppliers to be able to provide ESG data to them. Over the long time, uh, ESG adoption will create stakeholder trust, strengthen credit rating, and reduce cost of capital. And thus, this allows companies to retain a competitive edge as you know, markets increasingly favor sustainability. As you say, follow the money. You know, we think that the money is in sustainability, so therefore we should follow these trends of uh, markets being more focused on sustainability in the long run. Well, given that more than half of SMEs say that technology improves their ESG processes, how does this translate into financial benefits like reducing reporting costs perhaps or accessing new funding streams? Absolutely. You know, right away, we are able to help reduce reporting costs. You know, we mentioned about the challenges that some companies may face in adopting ESG. So with the use of technology, you know, we can actually reduce the number of, you know, uh, man hours required to put in the work. We can automate some of these processes like data collection and be able to make, you know, compliance automated. So this platform also allows SMEs to align with frameworks like the global frameworks like the ISSB and the GRI, which will also position them you know, favorably when they are trying to assess capital. So not only does it reduce cost of compliance, it will also actually allow them to have greater access to international streams of capital. So meaning any upfront cost they might have uh, with ESG compliance, does it get offset by the benefits that they receive from that compliance? Uh, absolutely. You know, first of all, even the first initial uh, upfront cost will be waived through this program because, you know, partnering with the DTI to allow Filipino SMEs to use the Spark template, that is actually a free and user-friendly template that we have uh, started off as a pilot for all companies today. And these uh, templates are actually based on a standard Okay, developed by the DTI and the GRI. Okay, it includes carbon calculators that are also calculating carbon emissions based on the international standard. So therefore, we are allowing a phased approach where it starts with a low cost or no cost uh, beginning step. It will also allow companies to scale up okay, as they are continuing to grow their business to be able to enjoy further value-added services that will be able to uh, allow them to get even more financial returns as they need to. 
Ben, in Western countries, in Western companies, um, some have reported that they are concerned that the kind of data that they report with their ESG reporting is getting used against them. Um, mm. How do you address this kind of concern? I actually think it's the opposite, you know, because if you simply do not report, it's actually just running away from the problem. And actually, you know, besides this term called greenwashing, you know, whereby some companies are embellishing their green credentials, there is another uh, negative term called green hushing. That is that, you know, companies do not even talk about green at all. So that actually creates another backlash because if you do not even provide any forms of uh, report, actually it's going to be increasingly difficult to do business in today's age where a lot of consumers, investors or the larger corporates actually do require these reports. So I guess the best way to you know, look at it is that you know, across the world, uh, not just in the Western world, but also in Asia, a lot of countries in Asia are now mandating, ma mandating the, the reporting of sustainability data which means that it's going to be compulsory for all companies to now uh, be able to submit sustainability reports okay, as part of their financial year reporting. So there's really no choice at all to you know, having this data being published. There seems to be a lag time between the ESG reporting that Western companies, Western countries have been implementing, as well as in um, more advanced economies like Singapore um, and the Filipino uh, reporting, how can ESG reporting help Filipino SMEs bridge this $7.8 billion green financing gap that's been identified by the World Bank, you think? Yes. So I think that, you know, by allowing more Filipino SMEs to be able to reach the standards of reporting, just like in the international markets, okay, we will be able to bring them up to par with the same level of compliance. So we are quite fortunate to be you know, partnering on this program, whereby the Spark template actually does align the SMEs with the international standards, which is where you know, international financiers are able to do a very uh, comparative approach towards comparing this data and the ones that they need okay, for their investing. Back to an earlier point that you made, uh, with the Philippines aiming for a 75% emissions reduction by 2030, is there a role that your carbon ca calculator can play in uh, financially preparing SMEs to meet these goals and avoid potential future penalties? Yes, absolutely. I mean, I read this statistic from the DTI website that more than 99% of the economy is made up of SMEs. So which means that, you know, if the country requires uh, reductions to be reduced, SMEs have a significant role to play. So uh, what, we, what we are doing right now is that we are providing the use of a carbon calculator, okay, which calculates carbon emissions effectively and accurately based on the ISO 14064 standard. So this is actually readily available as part of the Spark program, allows companies to easily calculate their carbon emissions and also allow for you know, all of them to be able to see how they can reduce their carbon emissions or to be able to meet their goals in a short period of time. Finally, how does ESG reporting among Filipino SMEs compare to other ASEAN countries and are there financial opportunities or challenges that this might present? Yes, so as a whole, you know, sustainability reporting on a mandatory basis is now being implemented all across ASEAN. So every single country in ASEAN has already announced the implementation of such rules. However, I think companies in the Philippines can benefit from such a program, you know, with this Spark program, for example, it does provide the access for tools whereby SMEs can therefore now get better uh, solutions, and this will allow them to be able to distinguish themselves, <coughs> and also therefore be able to get verification of the data and get access to financing. Well, hopefully, Filipino SMEs do utilize this Spark program to their benefit. Benjamin Saul, founder and managing director at ESGpedia, thank you so much for sharing your insights on the financial impact of ESG reporting for Filipino SMEs. Thank you. 
National ESG reporting not only helps SMEs align with regulatory standards, but also opens up financial opportunities, driving long-term profitability and resilience in the Filipino market.